to choose the CD-ROM as our media. Ooh, he's back. What? Camera's off. Right. Uh, I lied. No, no Witcher yet. I'm gonna catch up on the Night City Wire right now. So I apologize in advance if you've already seen it. Um, then you get, you get to do the thing. Sorry. This chair, like, rolls up my, uh, the, <clears throat> it rolls up my t-shirt. So I gotta, like, curl it back down sometimes. It's because I'm using, like, a lumbar pillow now, and it kind of smushes up my shirt when I, anyway. Uh, you guys can do the thing where it's like, ooh, watch this part. Watch this part. Oh, you haven't seen it yet? Sick. All right. Well, merely wait 20 minutes or 20 seconds. Will Seth be on one of these? I, I don't know. I, I don't think she's in this one. That's not even 30 minutes? Awesome. Okay, cool. Night City Wire. Cyberpunk. I will consume this product. Get excited about product. My chair does the same thing. Eh, I think it's kind of a, it's bizarrely common, I think. Ah, especially when you recline that it like that your back elongates the smaller your back. Okay. You don't believe in no fate. Uh, every day digging the grave. Uh, stepping up here with a stakes. Uh, city of dreams, city of dreams. Hello and welcome to episode two of Night City Wire. This is the show from us at CD Projekt Red, where we talk about all things Cyberpunk 2077. In today's episode, we're going to be deep diving into Life Pass and okay. showing you a brand new game. I'm curious video, about that. As well as having a chat to Philip from our quest team. Then we're going behind the scenes and taking a look at how refused to bringing the band Samurai to life. And then we're showing you another new gameplay video and having a chat to Pavel, our senior gameplay designer, about just some of the tools of destruction that will be at your disposal. That in was life. a pretty cool looking gun. So let's get started. Stupid nomad or cool. Yondu's. Which will you pick? First? Yondu's arrow gun. I like that music. That was good shit. Yeah, they got refused is samurai. Like uh they uh Well who do we have the in-game band samurai, which is part of Haywood. Cyberpunk 2020 lore, um, is represented by Neighbors help each other out. Thought nothing of it. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna pause here because uh I I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it. How like uh <clears throat> Oh, well, we'll get there. I just didn't want to talk over the whole thing. But uh, I think it's actually really important to bring up in regards to Samurai. That Samurai is canon, but it's canon to 2020. Like, it's canon to the pen and paper. So, in the world of Cyberpunk 2077, you're like 50 years on from that kind of music. And they're still around. Like, there's still references to them. But, like, Johnny Silverhand was the lead singer. And he's dead. Like, uh, so all this stuff, I think, it, I, what, I, what I suspect. And in this way, this is what's really cool. And here's my ultimate point. Um... Punk music started about 30, 40 years ago, which is about the lag to now, about. So I, what I find really cool <clears throat> with them using Refused is that it makes sense in the world of Cyberpunk 2077 for uh, the, the music they play to kind of be classic, you know? Um, Refused has a pretty grungy, like 80s rock sound still. Uh, so it's pretty cool for the, of them to like, associate an older band that was like super synonymous with the genre with the canon of the old pen and paper and now you have music that is like current to the game but is well in the future of where the canon used to be um which also is actually super similar to the way they did witcher 3 or, or the witcher games is that they're like they are in the world of canon but it's advanced like it's forward okay i just think that's really cool that's like a really neat element of synchronicity I am pleased to see you have not forgotten your roots. Born here, live here, die here. Childhood memories, hopping buildings, running away from badges. But like, this music the blood sounds like music now, which is to say it's the music of 2077, which is the future Get everybody of the 80s, which is kind of 2020. Get the fuck out of this. <clears throat> Keep getting jumped You find some stronger tubers. Also, I'm glad that of your days blasting scabs. He said chumba and it didn't sound stupid. That's a big deal. I've been worried about the slang. 
Cyberpunk 20, Cyberpunk slang is dorky. It is dorky as shit, but he actually made it sound cool. He made it sound like somebody might actually say that and not cringe immediately. Racing my bobber for the first time through the hills. <laughs> oh, and the uh, first kiss in the middle of a synth cornfield. We nomads choose to make our family. Synth corn. That's a just what it's called. Forges strong bonds and a higher duty that stands solid as an old oak. My family's in pieces. That's why I'm headed for Night City. <clears throat> Makes you an outcast among outcasts. So like your family might show up all of a sudden What's and be like, this? do this thing. You know? Camarado. I know. I saw it in your heart the first time we met. Who is that? We've never you know seen that I character before. Right? Your taste. Oh! Hunger. You can fast and furious street race? Not easy to come by in that city. Corpse got there. Just without the streets, I guess. Tomboy girlfriend, childhood friend. Oh, is that who that is? I have those reports. Isn't that, for. isn't that basically the uh, to be Jackie's role, though? Or, like sidekick? The world's going to tear us apart when the word gets around. So the world's never going to find out. Corpo might be cool just I because you get down. to see the coolest you're buildings. Down with me. Like, no, you're trading dirt I'm for neon light fixtures this and like polygonal tables. V. Oh, look at that chair! No way you're fucked, right? Oh, look at that bathroom! Fixes other people's shit. Look at that sink! Working our socket counter intel. You're always fucked. Oh, oh! Hey, they got you a zero, somebody. Those walls are gorgeous. Tomorrow. Hold up! Oh, hold up! Oh wait, no. Okay, so there's a whole hour on the playhead. I was gonna scoot back. Are there are there rewind short uh, hot keys for Twitch? I want to look at that wall again. Maybe if I just hit the back arrow. Look this counter into. All right. This isn't a request, V. But no way you're fucked. I'm gonna right? zoom enhance. You're the one yeah, arrow other people. Shit. That's like five seconds, maybe. You work an hour socket counter intel. You're always fucked. Whoa, that's cool, dude. I wish it wouldn't like. I wish it wouldn't dim the screen when it's paused. Today, man, they got you to zero somebody. That's awesome. Tomorrow, they'll get somebody else to zero you. What's the rules, Jack? It's like a streamer wall. The top. It did kind of look like sound paneling in the game. You're not on top. It's a borough where Osaka is. And you're the pendejo. Ah, oh, those chairs! Work for yourself, live for yourself. That's the only way. Was that like a... And you're the pendejo. Was that a flying car? Work for yourself. With a champagne dispenser yourself. in it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Just be like... Vood, vood, ah. That's the only Holy way. Shit, how to do a night on the town. Philip, it is so good to see you again. It's actually been a while since I've had a chance to interview you about cyberpunk. So I think for Are you today, going corp, we'll start with a question that everybody wants to know. <sighs> corp looks so cool. How affect your time in Night City? It actually affects your time quite a lot throughout the whole game, but let's start at the beginning because basically our game has three different starts. Depending Stephanie, on uh, let me know that uh, as an example, he's not he's not on a green screen. Street kid life path. They have a, they built out a part of their studio to look like that. You know, people have been sending her photos. You know the gangs. You know the slang. You kind of know what's going on in the let's say lower life. Let me tell you. Of the city. Man, does it hurt of course, to not be able to go there? Good opportunities but also later on in the game. That's the world. Uh, We're losing something. If you start as right? a nomad, you actually used to Look. be part of it's a nomad neon. clan and a oh. nomad family. Because nomads that roam the deserts around Night City, that we call the Badlands, actually valued their family above anything. But for one reason or another, you actually left that family behind. And now the beginning of the game for you will actually be how to get into Night City. And yeah, how to Corp is Ultimate right Cyberpunk. There. It's what I think everyone thinks of when they think of cyberpunk. A corporate, like, choose the corporate life path. Amoral, that opulent, means that you're rich. You're not at home in the streets of Night City or in the deserts of the Badlands, but actually inside the boardroom because you rose the corporate ladder of the Arasaka like Corporation. Politics. Which basically gives you the ability to sometimes, oh. you know, read between the lines, read people when they're trying to do business, which of course can give you many nice opportunities later on. So this isn't just about the stuff. Um, so, <laughs> Stephanie also, I'm wondering... I'll let, hmm, 
I have an idea, and I think maybe I can I can provide a service here, because uh, I read the uh, I read the cyberpunk lore book, uh, and I can provide some context for some of these things. Um, I'm gonna go grab it. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure Arasaka's role in Night City is pretty important. I think I think they're the corp that got hit with the nuke, um, because the the background of 2077 actually has some shit going on. So let me go grab the book and, and double check my notes, because Arasaka's role in Night City is actually pretty important. Um, so one second. Okay, I got uh, it. If you take take our picture. I got it. Actually, here this looks this looks more appropriate. I thought about uh, setting up a camera to just shine it directly on the book, and then I thought, mm, maybe that's not cool. Uh, so I found the section that I was looking for. <clears throat> yeah, it was Militech and Arasaka, like the two big corporations in Night City. Um, Militech is a military provider, it's, hence their name. Arasaka does a ton of stuff. Let's see here. They, they went into hot war in 2022. Uh-huh. Well, which was basically a global war, and that kind of led to the collapse, I believe. Um, yeah, Ar Arasaka Tower and Night City were the last of Arasaka's American headquarters to fall, wiped out by a tactical nuclear weapon detonated by a group of unidentified mercenaries. Um, some sources implicated the so-called Atlantis group, including such modern legends as rogue Morgan backhanded Johnny Silverhand. But uh, there wasn't enough evidence to confirm the group's involvement. Um, this, is, this is already like post-2020. So uh, this is like lore that I, th I, my assumption is, I guess I, I haven't super confirmed this, but my assumption is this lore is post the, the uh, it's pre the game by a, by a mile, but post uh, tabletop. So this is CD projects, like extension of, of what, what lore was in the tabletop. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Morgan and Johnny were never seen again after the Arasaka Towers incident and Rogue has repeatedly denied her participation in the operation. And then uh, let's see here. Under pressure from the Japanese government, Arasaka finally conceded defeat at the end of 2023. Militech emerged victorious, but was nearly crippled, or nearly as crippled as their rival. So, yeah, that's that's right. Uh, that's kind of the link between Arasaka and Johnny Silverhand. Um, and I guess the chip that Arasaka has. Maybe, like, Johnny Silverhand's brain was alive in the basement of Arasaka headquarters, for digitized for years on a burnt hard drive, and then, who knows, man. Um... Uh, okay, and then there's a lot going on with the, like the formation of Night City in general, uh, and there was Arasaka did something politically. They basically like made it so that uh, Night City could be a, a free city um, governed by corporation. Uh, let me see here. I think that might be in this section. Fourth corporate war, yeah. That, so the end of that was Arasaka getting nuked. Um, Post-war... Yeah, there was a thing where, like, God, the United States was dissolved, but then the United States got back together again, except uh, Cal Northern and Southern California stayed... No, it was just Northern Cal... or North California. I'm trying to get to just the part about Night City. So you're the Metal Wars, <laughs> 2069. It's This is nice, getting a little closer to the, the events of the game. Okay, so, yeah, okay. Uh, Northern and Southern California wound up on opposite sides of the war, with the South allying with the United States government and the North attempting to remain independent from federal rule, and the people of Night City holding their breath as they awaited invasion by federal troops. So, yeah, there was, like, a new United States, and it was like, okay, everybody get back on board, and California was like, or North California was like, no, we're good. Um, so they, they were basically getting invaded. Uh, in early 2070, an NUS, what does that stand for? New United States? Yeah, that's right, it's just New United States. Um, an NUS army division advanced to the outskirts of the city. This is Night City, by the way. Uh, but invasion was prevented thanks to the quick actions of Councilman Louis Ryan. Capitalizing on contacts made during a decade of service in the city council, Ryan besieged the Longshun Arasaka Corporation for protection. Within days, an Arasaka supercarrier arrived in Coronado Bay. Mere hours later, the NUS army had withdrawn. So it's because of Arasaka that Night City is not a federally uh, controlled uh, city, basically. Uh, where is Night City geographically? It's like, it's close to San Francisco, but not quite there. Um, it's, it's a little further south of San Francisco, I believe, but it is in Northern California. It's kind of like two-thirds of the gap between LA and, and San Francisco, I think. 
Yeah, it's it's between the two cities, and I think it's more towards San Francisco than than L.A. It's weird because everyone assumes that Night City is like an analog for Los Angeles. Does L.A. still exist? It does, but it's not important, I don't think. It, it's part of South California. Um, I mean, I could see them being like a, pro a, produ a producer of, uh, oh, it was wiped off the map? Yeah, LA is just gone? Okay. I could, like, I could see like brain dance production happening in LA. So, sorry. My neurons were firing a little bit there. I wanted to refresh and make sure it was accurate. Arasaka both was tied to the disappearance of Johnny Silverhand and um, politically and historically is the reason that Night City is independent uh, from, a, from a federal government. I'm trying to think of where to put this so it doesn't get damaged. This is a really nice art book, by the way. And I feel like now is a good time to disclose. Um, my girlfriend works for this company. So I'm watching their media, sitting in their chair and reading their book. Um, let's be real. I want the game to do well because I want her to do well in her career, and I'm super proud of her. But that deserves that deserves mentioning. You know, I'm I'm swathed in it, but I would have been anyway. Uh, and the reason that we are together is because because of stuff like this. Can you maybe help people understand? Realize I should clarify that we're the kind of people who are drawn to things like this. Uh, I did not date her in a six-year plan to be connected to cyberpunk, uh, which was actually announced back then. Weird. And how this translates into the gameplay. Yeah, so the thing is, we make cyberpunk a real RPG. And part of that is that you can play your character from the start or did you? to the end. Gosh, and you got of course, me. you know, we have these life paths affecting the beginning of the game, but we wanted to make it so you have your life path opportunities throughout the whole game until the, the game is over. And as an example, we do that by giving you additional Ooh, options and dialogues. Mm. So I can give you one specific example. And so this shiny. is a mission where you have to steal a flathead like robot shirt a lot. from the Maelstrom gang. Basically, those Maelstrom Making guitar strings look like circuitry that before from a corporate transport. And the owner of that corporate transport, Meredith Stout, wants you to do something else. And this is an optional objective. And even within that objective, we want to give you some options. So as an example, if you have a corporate life path, you basically know what Meredith Stout is really about. You can read between the lines hmm. and you can get some additional options that maybe actually later enable you to do a completely different thing with the Maelstrom gang. And if you're a nomad, you know exactly some more details about how these Maelstromers would have even been able to steal a robot like that from Meredith Stout, who's part of the very powerful Militech Corporation. So it's as like... Street Kid, we as... Apparently, so it's funny. The, uh, the, the question with that stuff is always, will it matter and to what degree? Um, the, the nice one, but not the ideal one, is that there's like dialogue or, or lore, just like something that's like, yeah, that happened. Um, but it sounds like it's actually gameplay implication too. It can actually change quest progression which is nice I, honestly it would have been enough if it was just like a little a little more dialogue or more lore that you get for each run but man if it actually changes the flow of quests that's very cool as an example don't give you a specific new dialogue option in that dialogue because as a street kid you do not have a lot of experience dealing with higher up people like Meredith Stout but we want to give you additional options that fit your life path very well so later when you actually talk to the Maelstrom gang one member of the gang offers you some illegal substance, but as a street kid, you actually know what this is about. You can talk some shop with him, and that might actually make that character like you a little bit more. Hmm. So, Philip, I do have a couple of extra questions for you based on the video we just saw. Weapon and LTK? the first is about nomads. You're very pretty. So, the nomad life path Thank you for the prime. starts in a place called the Badlands. Is this somewhere you get to visit, even if you don't pick Nomad to start with? Oh, and Sweet Hoyt, oh, yes, thank absolutely. you for the prime. So the thing is, Night City oh. is surrounded by this oh. huge landscape that we call the Badlands. And you can go there whenever you want. So as an example, if you actually do play the Nomad life path at the start and you are in the Badlands, you can even see Night City on the horizon. And we want to give you the option later in the game, if you want, you can just take your car and drive out of the city. You can go there whenever you want thing is, you might not want to because the Badlands can that be a wall, pretty Jesus. dangerous place at first. Yeah, between South and North China California. China very kind to the Badlands. There Jeez. have been many wars in the past. There's global warming. So most people that do live out there don't really have another choice about it or are nomads that 
love this life and are all about it and are very battle-hardened. Huh. We, of course, also want to tell their stories because we want to tell many, many different stories throughout the cyberpunk genre, which means that you will also find missions that lead you out in the Badlands or where you deal with the people living there. So, Philip, can you tell us a little bit more about the character, Padre? He's the guy we see giving his business card to Street Kid V in the video. Who is this man? Yeah, so Padre is actually one of the fixers in Night City. And fixers are people that work as intermediaries. So if someone who has a lot of money needs a problem solved, they go to a fixer. And a fixer then finds people who can solve that problem. And these people are people like you, V, cyberpunks. Fixers are very territorial, so Padre specifically works from Haywood, which is where you as a street kid grew up in, so you already know him. You might have already seen another one of our fixers, who is called Dexter Deshawn, and he works in a different part of the city. Hmm. So specifically Padre, you might know him as a street kid, but even if you played other life paths, you might sooner or later meet him, because he's operating in Haywood, which is a pretty big place with many good jobs, so if you want to make some cash there, you will sooner or later deal with Padre. Philip, thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Now on my first playthrough, pretty sure I'm going to be picking Nomad. But for those watching, we would love to know what you'll be picking. So have a think about it and send us a tweet. That makes sense. Don't forget, but like, later in this episode, there's not content that's locked to a story path. It's just video. different, and more in depth, or has a different Pavel, perspective. It's kind of the perfect way to do it. Just some of the tools. That way you get the most, the most like value out of the assets you create. But before that, let's talk about music because music plays a huge part in bringing Night City to life. Now in future episodes, we're gonna talk about things like radio stations and even the original score. But today, we're gonna to take a look behind the scenes I am into how it's used to bringing Johnny Silverhand's band, Samurai, to life. I wouldn't write these lyrics. I've heard some of the tracks already. They're so good, dude. They're so good. So it's kind of interesting to, to get into like the mind of Steph know her, yes. this character and what would they write about or what, what, what's their agenda. It's interesting to, to try to like catch a language that... My understanding is that she's, she's Steph's job but for the UK. Cool. There is a reason why we're here. Mike, Steph does not have to point a gun to me to, for me to watch these things. Absolutely not. It was Piotr, maybe, who, who was a fan of the band. He knew Refuse and he knew my voice, and he said, oh, that's a perfect voice for, for Johnny. It's going to be interesting to hear that coming out of Keanu. And they wanted, I guess, a sound that was a bit contemporary from when it's when John is supposed to have had the band, because he's sort of like an anti-establishment kind of guy. Gonna drag a corporal rat on stage, make him kneel, douse him with gas, and light him up. So of course there are things that you can relate to, and like just like this outcast and this rebel that's fighting against like the Wait. corporal. Wait, and that's definitely something that's been. You give flashbacks like, as Johnny. We came out of the punk rock scene of uh, North. That's cool. He's like the future version of us. You know? So I, I think it makes sense. I think it totally makes sense for us. Oh, brain dance. Yeah, of course. Making these songs. Uh, really good about point. Him yeah. Before him, you know, so it's pretty cool. Of course, there'd be brain dance of being Johnny yeah. Silverhand. No, 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 no trills. But <laughs> yeah, but like wide vibrato. Yeah, Shape of Puck to Come is just such a rock solid I mean, yeah. slowly mm -hmm. so intensely. We don't have a different uh, Johnny's guitar, and guitar and sing. going all in. So we're, we really worked on these songs, trying to make them as good as possible. But then they're not actually our songs. It's interesting as, as a musician to play another musician, because that's essentially what we're doing. I mean, we're not here as refused, we're here as samurai. <laughs> and I'm here with Johnny Silverman, you know, so it's like the voice we're representing here is someone else. We'll never fade away! It's a, been a mind. So wait, was that an actual concert they did? Like, as Samurai? Is this Chippin' In? This Chippin' In is a real good track. I think somebody in chat actually pointed me towards it. Yeah, 
I can hear like Keanu's kind of gravelly, low voice sounding like that at singing. I can hear it. I mean, the shouting that, in itself is yeah. just like second nature to me because I've been I've been doing this for a very long time. But then, when someone comes in and says, "I'm happy with everything except for Azalin," again, it's Azza. 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 <laughs> okay. The shouting's great, but think of that accent or think of that like enunciation. It's a bit weird because it is a, it's a very different way of singing when, you, when huh. you're screaming like that and it's hard to sort of... <laughs> you're swallowing some <laughs> syllables there. Adjust your accent. Oh yeah, just try it again. So it's, it's been a bit kind of frustrating. <laughs> it, it wasn't... It wasn't... It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. But I mean, I get it. I mean, we, we have to maintain the illusion that this character that's a character of the game also is, is me, like when I'm singing it. So it makes sense, but yeah, it's, it's a bit different to have someone yeah. tell me Yeah, uh, exactly you know a game's big budget when they have an English it. translation director? Usually, usually people are just like, give me a thumbs up and then like... So, let's continue the lore dive, shall we? CD Projekt, it goes pretty bananas on localization. Um, and there's a reason, because that's how the company started. They were the first company, like, they're called the CD Project because uh, I think it was the two co-founders just in high school would bail to go uh, sell uh, PC games. Um, they would boot, I think they may have, well, I don't wanna say they started bootlegs, but uh, they just started making money from that. So they just started doing it. And then the business like grew and grew, they became a Polish distributor. And then they started funding their own Polish localizations. So um, like hiring Polish voice actors and actresses to do uh, the translations and the performances and stuff. Can't remember what game, the first one they put out, I think, this is my, my memory's fuzzy on this, uh, but I think um, it was like the first game ever localized in Poland. Oh, no clip is a good doc on it. Okay, this is this is just me like poking through their website. Um, yeah, the no, I'm sure the no clip doc has all this information and much more, and told told more artfully than I'm doing now. But uh, yeah, their their legacy is in localization, um, and they uh, because of that they actually localized to. Tons of territories, and uh, they invest pretty heavily in uh, in that. They rely heavily on Polish government. Yeah, people say that like it's a bad thing. Um, consider that CD Projekt has been instrumental in exporting anything about Poland. Um, would you know anything or think anything about Poland? If, well, maybe some, some maybe some news articles if you if you're in the news scene. But uh, yeah, that's the, that's the game, man. If your government pays for cultural works that hurt like serve to elevate your culture on the world stage good man solid bet right on uh so imagine having a government government that supports you i mean yeah the, uh, most governments have art grants of some kind but they brought the witcher out of obscurity yeah polish translation for baldur's gate yes yes bosk that that is that is correct so not only is their legacy in uh and localization but it's also in rpgs so it's pretty cool pretty cool and you can kind of you can kind of read their culture uh from being like early pc in uh in the fact that you know they still uh like the good old game store is, is still such a, a friendly store in pretty much every you way know, you, you think the things like the rhythm and you think about the pitch and you think about all these things but then someone comes in and like that word sounded weird. I'm like, what? No, it's, it's how I sing. But so it's, it's been a very, uh, yeah, a bit painful <laughs> at times. It's how I sing. But it's all right. See this soon, I'm chipping in. Roll the boots, I'm chipping in. Yeah, I've downloaded Gwent. I haven't played it yet. Man. It, it's a very interesting thing to be part of. As, as a person that's not a gamer, I don't think I fully understand the impact that this might have. If people like these songs and if people are excited, that, then that's gonna be great. I mean, we, we are spending a lot of time <laughs> trying to get this right, trying to get it to sound like, you know, like samurai would sound, you know, so it's, it's, it's quite interesting. It's a very different way of, uh, of, uh, of, of making music, actually. Hmm. Uh, can I upload a Twitch vid I made to YouTube for fun 
and not to profit. You can already find three samurai tracks. You don't, you don't need my permission services. to do that. But yeah, Chipping you can in, absolutely never do that. Fade Away and The Ballad of Buck Ravers. But we're excited to announce a fourth new song called huh? Alike Supreme, which cool. is coming to streaming services um, today. The only that thing you, can check the only thing you have to kind of watch over. out for is... Don't forget that if you're good, I've already done it. Or if you just want to watch any... I'm glad I could help. We will be uploading everything to our channel soon. Do you mean a stream of mine? and I are going to introduce you to some... Creative no, a Twitch vid you made, yeah. Right. In Night City. You might need to be you might need to be more specific. My video. Okay, yeah, hey. You have my blessing to do whatever you want with your video. I stream too? Okay. A client that might be making an arms deal. He needs It's a fun game. Um, to figure out how to like the gun dealers on repackage a product Alas, nothing ever transpires as planned with for them. different services try to cater to this. different needs and different wants hey nor should i thank you for the prime Ooh. okay so let's see a little gun customization Is it really going to be the sort of thing where you just like you cram all of your resources into a magnum opus gun and then that's all you use the whole game i guess it's like different guns for different uses ideally cool oh like, consider like smart guns are really important because they remove the need to aim from the game. You can play it basically like a JRPG. Like, you tell the game what to do and it does it, you know? Um, the presence of something like that means that pretty much anyone could play through the game as long as they find it and know how to use it. Man, I feel like that would be a really fun playthrough. Just a brawler with robot arms. Oh my gosh. Sovi, are you willing? This is the only way to play for yeah, someone with disabilities. I mean. That's a good point. I guess it depends, like, what accessibility options will be there. But Pavel, thank you. Or so much maybe a, like a diplomatic path. One of those where you can just talk your way through right, every situation. More than just guns. Absolutely, we have melee weapons, we have range weapons, we have cyberware, we have offensive cyberware, defensive cyberware, armor. We could talk for hours and hours about this stuff. I think just for today's episode, we should keep it simple. Yeah, just cyberware. Let's just talk about guns. Can you or talk, like uh, the different types? Maybe of the guns RPG thing of game. you get so we have um, three distinct types partners, of guns in our game. and if combat does our break out, you would have to just hide while they shoot everybody. Or maybe you can just like hack things. You just like deep, deep, deep. One thing they can do with like somebody's gun explode cannot, is ricochet bullets while your while your partner so is running in there with a shotgun hiding behind cover uh, or hiding behind that's a wall. cool now tech weapons on the other hand use electromagnetic power to propel a fully metal projectile to extreme velocities what that allows them to do is to punch through cover or punch through walls to hit somebody who's not even aware that you're there Smart weapons use guided missile technology to actually track targets in real time. So you can hit somebody who's dodging, running away from you, or you can hit somebody who's hiding behind cover. So Pavel, Cyberpunk doesn't just contain FPS elements, right? It's also a fully fledged RPG. So can you tell us how you guys approached introducing those RPG elements into gunplay? So I can tell you one thing, Holly, it wasn't easy to merge those two elements <laughs> together. Now, uh, we've spent a considerable amount of time merging the RPG and FPP side of our game. Hmm. What the player will experience is that FPP, v first person from a small time mercenary punching? to a legend in the world of Night City. V becomes more and more proficient in using weapons as the game progresses. So they will see that reload times become shorter, uh, the accuracy of your weapons grows. Uh okay. 
I've been wondering a lot about this, a lot, and I've been waiting to hear about it. How does the RPG layer affect the actual movement and action of the game? Is it like Deus Ex style, where the lower your skill is, the more your gun actually sways and the less accurate you are? It sounds like that's the case, which is weird because people usually don't like it when they aim with a banana. Um, so I'm curious. I'm curious how much this game is going to be a fun shooter or be a skill-based representative RPG. It sounds like it's trending towards RPG. That if your skill is low, your accuracy, your accuracy is low and your reloads are really long. Uh, the more you use something, the more proficient you get. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering where it starts. Like, do you start like a bumbling idiot who doesn't know how to shoot straight? Or are you already proficient at shooting and it only gets better? I'm guessing it's probably something like that. But the fact that skill does mechanically influence it as opposed to just giving you like 5% damage, 10% damage, 5% bonus headshot damage. Congratulations, your gun's level 12. You reload 10% faster. Like, I, I, I do like... I do like feeling mechanically restrained at the beginning. Um, I feel like it makes you play a certain way. As opposed to doing like two less damage a headshot, well, you know, I'm unloading a whole clip into their brain so it doesn't matter. I can still play this way, it's just awkward. I do like it when it's like, I unload a full clip and it hit, two bullets hit him and that was it. Um, maybe like Doom weapon mods? Could be. Like it has innate properties that uh, don't move. And then you get like bolt-on function, maybe. Maybe like the division. Yeah, the division just has bullet spread, right? Uh, you will have faster aiming time. You will move faster with your weapons. Everything becomes more in your control and that gives you more mm. opportunities to defeat the biggest encounters that we've designed for you. Yeah, recoil, movement speed, so reload. I have prepared a few extra questions for you, Pat. There's a lot of knobs they can twiddle it. to make of you course. better and faster. Okay, yeah. well the first is gonna be, how do you find more weapons in Night City? Like where will players be looking for them? So I expect the players to look everywhere for- Treasure new chests. And exciting weapons. You can of course buy weapons at vendor shops and they will house an entire catalog of weaponry that you can get. However, the best weapons that you can find will be taken from enemies or loot caches that we have everywhere in Night City. Treasure. The weapons rarities range from common through uncommon up to rare and then legendary. And as they go in rarity, they actually climb in power. However, legendary weapons are very specific in such a way that they possess unique abilities that you will find on no other weapons in the game. The players will actually... Hey, Steph. Did you open a book? Uh, yeah, I opened the art book. Oh, okay. I was referring to lore because I'm watching Night City Wire. Yeah. Yay. So, yeah. I sat in a cyberpunk <laughs> chair to watch a cyberpunk thing and read a cyberpunk book. I actually have another cyberpunk book over here. It's within arm's reach. The Hollow Men. This was a gift. I'm gonna read this on Friday. Here, here's a little, here's a little sample. I'll read you the first paragraph. Oh wait, hold on. I think it starts with a T.S. Eliot poem. It does. I think, I think I've done this before. The T.S. Eliot poem, at least. We are the Hollow Men. We are the stuffed men. Our dried voices, when we whisper together, are quiet and meaningless. <laughs> Chat says hi, by the way, Steph. She says hi back. Chapter one, meet the hollow men. Joshua Victor could speak 200 languages and dream in 50. He could breakfast in Tokyo and dine in New York without jumping on a near orbiter. He could walk through walls. He could sing like a bird and look like one too if the fancy struck him. He was a net runner. One of the best, a high flying all fortunes good in these cookies. What? A high flying all fortunes good in these cookies. Magical numbers coming up, certified crazy edge runner. He didn't pay for his net time, he charged it to an obscure corporate account that was never audited. Same with his term. He didn't buy it, he built it to somebody else. And it was the fastest, latest, most interactive, holographic, top-of-the-line machine on the market. In the year 2020, he was 19 years old, a 21st century wonder boy. What a gamer. Yeah, we got a real gamer on our hands. Joshua only had one problem. He was starting to spend more time jacked in than flipped out. And thus begins the, the tale of Hollow Men, a cyberpunk 2020 adventure. Um, I'm going to read that on Friday. So there's, uh, there's more lore. More lore on the way, you guys. 
need to make some tough choices to find some legendary weapons because maybe they need to choose whether to kill a person who holds the legendary weapons that they oh, want who's the author? or to spare them because Steven they like them Billius. as a character. So next question, let's talk about weapon modifications. What mods can people give to their weapons in Night City? So we have two types of modifications in the game. One of them would be modifications color. that we call attachments. So these would be scopes and silences. Blasting and through you the internet. You can see them actually being attached to your weapon as you're playing the game. They give you statistics advantage and they give you more opportunities in gameplay. The other part of mods would be software mods. Now these are basically small chips that you install in, the, in your weapon and they actually change the statistics of the gun. They can give you damage, they can give you accuracy or they can give you more fire rate. Some of those mods actually change the gunplay on a more fundamental level huh. so they can give you non-lethal rounds, biochemical rounds to tear through that armor even faster. So I suppose for my final question, uh, why don't you tell us about your favorite weapon then? Which is your favorite weapon so far in Night City? Oh, there are so many weapons that it's hard to choose just one. But I can mention some manufacturers with their weapons that I absolutely adore. The first manufacturer would be that looks Tsunami cool. Defense Systems, who <sighs> produces the sniper rifle Nekomata. That's a tech sniper rifle. That means that it can pierce through walls. So it can actually hit somebody who's hiding behind cover or who doesn't even know you're there. Of course, I also like a close quarters approach. And what that needs is a shotgun. One of the shotguns that we have in the game is Budget Arms Carnage. The brass that shells they're loading into that pure thing? pure steel, and it weighs a ton. However, you can cut a person clean in half with it. Another shotgun that I absolutely love, it's for a more refined approach, I would say, is a smart shotgun, Kang Tao Zhuo. That thing has eight barrels, and that means it can track eight targets independently. Now, killing an entire room uh. was never simpler. Uh, Papa, wow. thank you so much. For we finally have it. An eight-barreled shotgun. How do you load uh, I'm it? I'm actually pretty interested. You gotta like drop a six-pack in the back and then I guess you, you get uh, one shot. For themselves. Cause that's all you need. Before we end episode two, this is a reminder that those who wish to dive deeper into a lore can now pick up the world of Cyberpunk 2077. This is a brand new book created in collaboration with Dark Horse Got it. Books. That will give I mean, actually, smelling new book smells nice. Look at what makes Night City tick before jumping into the game this Delightful. November. That is it for today's cool. episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget that if you've missed anything or if That's you my book. want to watch again, we it's will a good book. be uploading everything. It's got a lot of great art shopping. in it. Thank you so much for tuning in and my girlfriend we'll works be back for them. with Night Gotta keep City saying it. Wire episode three soon. All right, all right, all right. Well, I guess this is, this is kind of what, uh, if this is like, this is nice, you know? It's like, it's good, it's interesting, um, it's educational, it certainly drives up the uh, the quality perception of the product, but it's not like, I don't know, don't, you don't need barn burning announcements every time. That's pretty cool, I'm into that. All right, cool. <sighs> and again, we wait. All right, I'm going to step away for a second. Um, has this been done before for a single game? You mean just like, I mean, there's games like Grand Theft Auto V, you know? Uh, all right, I'm gonna step away for a second. I'm gonna stretch out a little bit, and then, and then, for real, Witcher 3, boy, it's just CD Pro Project all over the place. All right, Witcher 3, in a minute.